Hello and welcome to Old School Marketing and B2B Break Room. We're excited to be here another week and another chapter. And today we're excited to be able to interview Matt Moles. He's with Allstate. He's an insurance agent in the big old state of Tejas, Texas, for those of you that don't know how to speak Spanish. Right. And he's going to be telling us a little bit about his story. Why did he get into insurance? Um, kind of his starting and uh, a little bit of background and we're just going to kind of go from there and see how things go. So, Matt, welcome to B2B Marketing. How right, are we doing? I'm doing good. How are you, sir? Awesome. Awesome. It's a beautiful day. It's it's going to be 80 degrees and sunshiny here. So it's oh, going to nice. be a it's fun 70, day. It's 70 and it's supposed to be in the 80s today, too. I mean, I'm looking for fall. It went from like 100 down to we had last week was nice. And so it'd be nice if there was a fall. So I think it's going to go straight from summer to, to, to winter here. So, winter. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need we need some uh, like several months of seventy and eighty would be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's perfect. <laughs> yep. uh, well, Matt, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, where did you come from? Like your history before Allstate. You know, what was life like for Matt? What were you doing before this? Sure. I mean, I don't know how far you want to go back. Um, so, I mean, I'll just give you a brief deal. Um, I was born in South America, in Colombia, South America. Um, I was adopted. My brother and I were adopted. He's six years older than I am. He's also from Columbia, but we were not natural brothers. Um, my dad worked for Phillips 66. And so he worked around the country um, in different uh, plants, um, oil and gas plants. And that's how I came to be. Um, how old am I? 45. So 45 years ago, 44 years ago, um, I grew up in uh, Borger, Texas. Um, from second grade on, which is in the Panhandle, which is about 45 miles north of my current location here in Amarillo. Uh, went to uh, went all the way through school there. Uh, went to uh, Texas Tech um, for a couple of years. Uh, had a lot of fun there and had to come back. And ended up graduating from WT, West Texas A&M here, uh, which is about 20 miles north of here or south of here in Amarillo in Canyon, Texas, which is a, a great uh, college as well. Uh, graduated with a uh, marketing degree and a minor in finance. Um, got out of college. Uh, in college, I worked for Circuit City, which, you know, was absolutely fantastic. I mean, that was when Circuit City A was in business. But B, they used to be commission sales. They literally sent you off teaching you how to sell. Um, and it, no knock on my current employment, but it was probably the the best sales training that I've ever had. Um, mm. And so did that through 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 college and then got out, graduated college and went to work for a merchandising company trying to utilize my marketing degree. Um, didn't really like that because there was no direct selling. Um, then went to work for a company called Mass Mutual, uh, selling uh, annuities, uh, fixed products. Um, did okay with that, did well enough, um, hit a very large case and did well enough to where I parlayed it into, uh, Allstate, um, had a, uh, family friend at the time who was a, uh, pretty large agent here in the area. And Allstate at that time was looking for younger agents who had a financial background. And I just happened to be young, I was extremely young and naive and inexperienced, but um, had you know, two years of financial background in me, um, which truly wasn't enough and wasn't a lot, but had success through that, was able to parlay a large commission uh, from a one individual key man case and buy into Allstate. And that was uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I'll, I'll be an agent. I've been doing this for now for 20 years, but went through all the schooling at this time. Um, so I'll be an agent effective, you know, for 20 years, uh, February 1st, 2024. Wow. So why did you choose Allstate 20 years ago? Yeah, just absolutely fell into my lap, you know, and lucked into it. Um, like I said, we had a family friend who was an Allstate agent. He had three agencies, you know, and he did very well. Um, you know, and I'll preface it by saying when I took over, when I started to be an Allstate agent at that certain time, I was told that I was the youngest agent in Texas, um, which 
gives you zero accolades, accolades except you yeah. have zero experience. You don't know what the heck is going on. It did nothing yep. for me. Um, but, you know, at the time, you know, I guess it was somewhat, it was a great opportunity. Um, yeah. And absolutely just lucked into it. Like I said, you know, agent and that we were, my family friends with had it. He thought I might be interested in it and uh, did the whole interview process, had to have enough capital to do it. And I just happened to have hit that case through a key man insurance through Mass Mutual. And so yep. I, I hit it big with them and then I leave them, which, you know, that wasn't the greatest of exits on that deal. <laughs> Didn't but, make them know, happy. Yeah. Right, yeah. But I mean, it's, it was all for the, all for the best. Yeah. Right. Right. Very good. So like, like, can you, do you have any cool stories of like the very beginning when you were just getting started? Um, you know, like life or death, am I going to make it, not make it kind of stories? Well, I can tell you that I was still on my parents' auto policy with State Farm when I started. Um, <laughs> had yeah. no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, when you start in this business, and I imagine it's the same way with a lot of companies, especially when you are an independent contractor. And I mean, there is training, but it's product training. It's process training. It's, you know, I guess company specific training. But what they don't train you on is um taxes uh managing people uh payroll um i mean just business in in general you know yeah. and i feel business like leadership. i oh yeah absolutely i feel like i learned how to do it uh about 15 years later about 14 years later i mean it took me a long time to figure out what the heck i was doing wrong by penalty by interest by just strictly not you know by trial and error basically um, and so, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that I got to where I am now, but I wish that I, you know, if I would have known then what I know now, I, you know, I don't know what I would be doing. Um, but it would, you know, I, I would be much better off and I would have wasted, I wouldn't have wasted so much time. I feel like, I feel like I spun my wheels for a long time just by simply not knowing. And, right. you know, and, and I figured out real quick that nobody's going to tell me what to do. Um, and, and I did have some, some great mentors, you know, I did have some, some good relationships that I had, but I strictly did not ask enough questions. And it's when it got to a point to where, you know, a few years ago where, I mean, I, you know, and I tell the story all the time. I, I feel like I almost pissed this opportunity away. Um, I had spun my wheels for, you know, about 13 years. And hadn't done horrible, but wasn't lighting, you know, lighting up any sort of path, you know, whatsoever. Wasn't, you know, killing it. Wasn't doing fantastic by any means. Right. Just kind of under the radar, getting by, and just kind of hoping, you know. And that's one thing that my dad has always told me. You know, hope is not a strategy. But I just kept hoping that things would turn around. But I, looking back, I wasn't actively doing anything to turn it around. I was just doing the status quo, you know, just what I thought I needed to do and just kind of getting by. But it wasn't right. until 13 years into it. So about seven, eight years ago, um, eight years ago, nine years ago, I guess now I'm getting myself dated. You know, I had a uh, upper management come to my office and he basically told me, he, or he, he advised me, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I can get a job in claims and that that's what I needed. You know, that's, that was the, you know, hit the wall type of moment for me. It was, I realized at that point that what I'd kind of had hoped, even though my dad always told me hope is not a strategy, what I had hoped would turn around. I realized at that point, him just mentioning that comment to me that here I am, you know, I have to figure it out immediately and, you know, quit wasting time quit, you know, quit flying under the radar and basically figure it out. And that lit an absolute fire under my, you know, under my, under my butt to yeah. get it done. And that still drives me, you know, I mean, that conversation was probably, you know, one of the most awkward, hurtful, but he was right, you know, and a few years ago when Allstate did some uh, management changes, you know, he retired. And I wrote, you know, I sent him an email and I told him, thank you for what he had done for me. 
and we had become friends since then. Um, you know, seeing him out, you know, at certain events and trips and stuff like that, you know, but I thanked him for that conversation where that absolutely catapulted me to where I am, you know, today. Um, and in fact, in my office, which you can't see, but across the way, I have a couple of shelves with some awards on it. But in 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 one of the shelves is a photo of him and I and another Allstate leader, uh, Texas Allstate leader, who's no longer with the company as well, given me an award seven, eight years ago where, you know, I was the number one agent in Texas. And so, I mean, to me, that is, you know, I, I look at that picture because it's like, I, I never want to go back, you know, and it was a couple of years from when he had talked to me to where that picture was taken. And so to me, it was just like one of those momentous deals where a couple of years prior, he's in my office basically telling me, hey, man, this probably isn't for you. And he was right. To where a couple of years later, he's handing me an award on a stage. Um, and I'm sure he forgot all about that, but I absolutely didn't. You know, and so I've always used that as my motivation and my reason to, you know, I tell people all the time too, you know, I, I operate out of fear because I never want to go back to where I used to be. Um, and so that's probably a long answer to your short question. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. So if I was a new, um, new entrepreneur thinking about going out on my own, what would you tell me? What are a couple of those questions that you wish you would have asked before you jumped into business? Yeah. So, I mean, staff, staff is, is absolute key. And, you know, and so I used to do it based on, I used to chintz on it, I guess, you know, and then I, I realized that quality staff needs to be paid accordingly, you know, and that's where you kind of, maybe, you know, head off some retention issue, I mean, retention as far as re retaining staff. Um, and, you know, I feel like just, you know, just for, for me as well, I mean, if you are being compensated for the work that you're doing and you can elevate that and, and make a little bit more money, then, you know, how much further can you go, you know, type of deal. And I want, you know, and I tell people here all the time, you know, I mean, we're, we're fortunate that we're doing what we're doing. You know, we're, we're not outside you know, in the 100 degree weather, digging ditches, this could be a, a lot harder. But it's very taxing too. It's, it's, you know, you're working with your mind, not necessarily with your physical body part of it. Um, but, you know, so, and it's a monotonous job too. And so, yeah. you know, I just, I, I just realized that, you know, staff is absolute key. You know, staff will get you where you want to be or staff will drag you down to where you don't want to be. Um, and so I wish I would have known that a long time ago. I was simply hiring staff without much thought into it, just trying to get a body in there and thinking that we could learn this, you know, together type of deal. Because another thing is, you know, I am horrible. I'm, I'm, I'm not a great trainer. I'm, you know, ask my staff. I'm not the best manager either. Um, I simply treat people the way that I would want to be treated on that other end of it. And I'm a doer, you know, not necessarily a you know, like a planner, you know, it's just one of those deals where, you know, watch me how I do it. And then, you know, so I need self-motivated problem solvers here. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I have. And, I, and like I said, and I have a fantastic staff and I'll be 100% you know, honest too. I bought into an agency uh, three years ago, four years, three years ago, that that staff is fantastic. And all that staff came over with me and they are still with me. Um, and they are, you know, a, a huge part of it, you know, as well. Um, but I mean, like I said, I, I have a fantastic staff. And so that's one thing I wish I'd have known back then. And also, I, you know, and this is the whole thing you always hear in business, you have to spend money to make money. You know, you have to spend money to make money. I mean, you have to get your name out there. You have to, you know, what whatever lead generation that you are thinking of, um, that's going to work best for you. I mean, you have to bet on yourself. You know, I mean, as much as, you know, I would love people to line up out my door here because they think I'm a swell guy. I mean, yeah. it doesn't necessarily happen that, that way. 
Um, what? I know. You, mean, well, you just don't open the doors and people well, flock I mean, to there's, you. There's a small line, but I mean, it's not. It's not, it's not very long. It's not like Best Buy at you know at you know on, yeah. on Friday after Christmas or Friday after Thanksgiving. But you know, I, I realized that you know it. You know, and it's a, it's a lot. You know that has to be you know kind of put into it. Um, and so you know, I spend a lot of money on marketing. Um, I spend a lot of money on guerrilla marketing. You know, that's one thing that I try to do differently than everybody else is I want to be name, brand, recognized with Allstate. I'm not necessarily trying to promote Allstate. I think Allstate is great and they do a, they have a much deeper budget than, than what I do, um, but they do a fantastic job of marketing themselves. I just try to hitch myself on to them with a little bit of them and a lot of me, you know, and so I, I mean... If you know me, then you know what I do. Um, I every, you know, and it doesn't suit well for like a garage sale type stuff, but everything I wear has my logo on it um, Monday through Saturday. On Sundays, I, I don't do that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at church, I, I try to take that off. But, you know, I mean, if, if so if, if you know me, then you know what I do. Um, I have vehicles that are wrapped um, that will look pretty cool. I have a trailer that sits outside my business that I lend my clients out for free just to use that is wrapped just like, you know, one of my vehicles. I have a golf cart that is wrapped just like my vehicles. And I try to keep it as consistent as possible with black and blue. Not necessarily, I, I don't do all, all state. It's a little bit all state, you know, more of me, but I try to brand it all the same. Um, simply, you know, because when, when somebody thinks of all state or when they come to that decision of, possibly shopping it, I want them to think of me before everybody else, you know, and it's yep. just simply just name recognition of repetitive, you know, enough, enough, enough. And to where, you know, I, you know, a lot of people don't believe in billboards and I do billboards too, simply because I want, once again, if you drive around this town um, or, you know, and I do markets other places too, then you're going to know, at least you're going to recognize my, edited picture, you know, probably, you know, brushed and, you know, like those filters that a lot of people use probably up there, which I, I know it is because it looks really good. Um, I mean, they're, they're, you're going to know at least name recognize whenever you get a mailer in the, in the mail or something that comes across your desk or something that happens where you're thinking of Allstate. I just want you to think of me first, you know, especially before all the other companies. But, you know, even before other Allstate agents in this town, which I have a great relationship with, I, you know, true, true, great friends, you know, that populate, you know, this area, of other, you know, other agents, but we also compete against each other too, you know, and so that's just one of yeah. the deals that, that, you know, that I do that I wish that I would known then that I know now. One of the things I like about what you're saying, you've got different, you're not putting all your marketing budget into one idea. You've got dinner, different things going on. And so all of that, because your brand colors, your brand logos, um, it's all working together. And it, it's often like, um, I know you do direct mail, you do social media, you do some digital, you got billboards, you got trailers, you got car wraps. Well, all of this is touches and all those touches add up over time. And what I see with a lot of customers that work with us, they, they, they'll take all their budget and they put it into one medium. And that's a mistake because to your point, billboards do work, but you can't just do billboards. You got to right. do billboards. You got to have the cars wrapped. You got to, you know, I got customers that uh, will buy coffee mugs and, and give them away free to local restaurants um, and all kinds of different things. But it's a constant, you know, just getting your name out there in different ways. Um, Michaela just joined us. She's our vice president of old school marketing and, uh, welcome to the team. So Sorry for being a little late, Matt, it's good to see you. Nice to see you too. How's it going? You're doing good. I just learned that you're Rusty's daughter too. I didn't know that either. Oh, you didn't know that. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. So cool. Well, we were, we we're just catching up and, uh, Matt told us a little bit about his history, how he got started. And uh, we're getting ready to jump into the fun future. Matt, what do you see for Matt Moles agency in the future? How are you going to grow? What obstacles do you see coming at you? And how are you going to champion that? Yeah, so 
It's a good question. You know, and I mean, this insurance, you know, the insurance industry as a whole, it's tough right now. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's scary, you know, and I try to minimize that the best that I can in my mind, you know, um, but it is scary. And so, you know, Matt 10 years ago would have, you know, wouldn't have planned accordingly, I guess on there, you know, now what I realize is that, I mean, it's scary for everybody. Um, it's scary for all companies. That's and correct. so, you know, one thing that I, that is different about me now is that, you know, I mean, when it comes to Allstate and, and our company this year, they've tightened up, like a lot of other companies, guidelines on certain things. They have um, taken out certain areas. They've essentially made it harder to, to write business, um, harder to qualify for business and harder to write for business or harder to write new business. But they haven't laxed on the goal that you need to write more business, you know, type of deal. So it's, you know, that in itself is an oxymoron, you know, coming from the company. However, you know, one piece of advice that I'd gotten years ago from an existing agent who has since retired, you know, he just said, you know, every single year, Allstate is going to come out with a new goal, a new strategy, or a new product. What you need to do is adapt every single year and figure out what they're asking for that year and maximize it because that's going to give you in the end, the best result, you know, for that, you know, you can't necessarily challenge it because nothing you're going to do is going to change it. You know, just right. try to adapt and figure it out. And that's another thing that I've kind of figured out in these last few years is, you know, I look at other successful agents and I think, you know, here we are, have all these negative, hard, challenging things coming down the pipe certain agents, you know, in all parts of the country, they will not only survive, but they will thrive. And yes. why will they survive and why will they thrive? A lot of it is attitude, but also a lot of it is, is planning, you know, as well. And so, you know, the difference is, you know, so now when, you know, now that I know that it's a scary environment, but I also know that there's a lot of people that are shopping. I mean, we are, we have, more of an opportunity to quote now than we ever have. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't always work out, but our ability to quote and the ask to quote is higher than it's ever been. So with that said, you know, as these guidelines start, you know, start to, to tighten up and I'll be honest with you guys, I mean, one of the first things that I did a couple of weeks ago, whenever we got the email saying, you know, certain things, First thing I did was I emailed you guys and said, I want to be in more areas, yep. be, you know, because simply I'm going to, bla you know, as, as I feel like certain agents will panic and certain agents will be like, well, crud, you know, you know, what am I going to do? They're cutting out this, they're cutting this commission, they're making this harder and they will start to decline their marketing budget. I'm going to ramp mine up. Um, Yes, to penetrate, to get into more areas so that I don't lessen my opportunity to quote here, you know, and it may be where I have to then spend more money to get the return on investment, you know, that I'd had before. Okay. But I also know that that only suits me better on down the road, you know, and I'm not a mathematician. I'm not smart enough to figure out all those numbers, but I know that the more that I grow, the, the better I do, yes, and, and and I do pay out a lot of commissions and, you know, in fee or, you know, whatever taxes and stuff like that. I, I do know it's put me in better position and in, in status with Allstate as, as I've gone along, and it's given me more opportunity to acquire agencies and to continue to market the way that I need to market. You know, it hasn't gotten to a point to where I have felt like, you know, I, I have to cut back. It's only made me feel like I need to ramp it up to get into different areas that I feel like maybe some other agents, not necessarily just with Allstate, but with any company that, you know, they're having to pull back. And so yep. that's, you know, that's, that's my strategy right now. I tell you, you know, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've started, grew, closed and sold off over 10 companies in the past three years. And I can tell you this, I, I don't think like a lot of people, I see, 
I see, I see a, a, a catastrophe. I see a problem. I see economic downfall and I see opportunity. And I look at these hardships and problems as a way to start new things, build new businesses, grow. Um, and it, I have, I've made millions of dollars off of situations by simply looking at it going, why is everybody running the opposite way? I need to go the other way. And I'm going to go find a way to make this into a profit center. And so you're doing the same thing. We're, we're literally running into a mess in 2024 with the presidential elections, economic downturns. I mean, I'm sure the weather is not going to be good next year either. So it's, you know, all this stuff is going on. And from an insurance perspective, it's a scary space. At the same time, to what you just said, when I started in insurance what, in 2018, I started in insurance. I couldn't get everybody to just pick up the phone and give me a quote. It was hard to just yeah. get people to respond. Yeah. You know, it, it took everything I had just to say, Matt, just give me a chance. Let me see if I can save you ten dollars a year. I mean, it was it was it was hard. And today, everybody, like I'm talking ninety eight percent of the population, and that's about a factual uh, stat. There, ninety eight percent of the population needs to save money. They've got to find ways to cut out expenses. Or on the other flip side. Um, I just did this personally. I look at my entire insurance portfolio, which I pay more insurance than probably most people make in a year. And I looked at my entire insurance policy and it's like, this isn't enough. And I actually went out there and raised different deductibles. And I looked at every property and what's going on. Am I insured for this? Am I insured for that? And I actually spent more money instead of less money because things are valued higher now. And I'm looking at this as a business owner going, I'm not okay. You know, my building that used to be a, a quarter million is now worth a half a million dollars. I need to go raise the property values and make sure that I'm insured correctly. So you're absolutely correct. We, and, and I've got many, many, I've got big customers and small customers. My biggest customers do exactly what you're saying. My biggest customers are doubling down. They're not spending 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. They're spending 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, hundred thousand dollars a month. Why? Because they've got to stay in business. It's going to take more effort, but the rewards are so much bigger. When Matt Mole's agency gets on the other side of this mess that we're going, and because of the investment that you're making now, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. When other agencies are pulling back on their marketing, and it's going to happen, you're going to be growing because you're going to be capturing a bigger audience because they're shrinking and you're increasing. And therefore, you're going to grow even bigger. So what a great opportunity for you and anybody else that has the wherewithal to get out there and really plug it and go after it. So good job. You're, yeah. you're on well, the you know, right and also, page. It's also about being smarter too, because, you know, one thing that I, after a few weeks ago, you know, we had a, a changes with Allstate where certain guidelines are tightened up. You know, that just made me realize that I need to be in areas that maybe haven't had as many losses. You know, and luckily the state of Texas is large, you know, luckily, you know, I'm licensed in, you know, a couple other states that I can, you know, choose to get out of my area. And so, I mean, and I used to think so small, I guess, you know, and, and I don't know why I did, because I would run into agencies that were down south that were writing business up in the Panhandle, Texas, and, and Texas is so huge. But I used to think, you know, I don't want to be down there competing. And I, and, I, and I can't tell you why I used to think that. But, you know, the one thing that I've realized is the fantastic staff that I have. And one thing that I can tell you that I know differentiates probably most of the Texas Panhandle agents from, you know, and no offense to agents, you know, down south. But I mean, even though I, I will write people in the Austin area, I'll write people in Oklahoma, I'll write people in other parts of Texas, we treat them the exact same way that we treat somebody who is down the street. You know, our, we are fantastic on service. We are fantastic on, on onboarding and we're accessible, you know, and so I'm never going to treat somebody in the Austin area that we just wrote and right. then be done with them. You know, I mean, I want them to call us for everything as well. And because that only creates, I mean, it creates a problem if it gets too much, but then I'll just hire somebody else on the service side to help that. But the, the value of retaining that, that client and giving them service versus just being strictly like a, uh, an online provider where it's a call center, where it's a one and done. I mean, that's one thing that I, I know that we need to be better at as far as writing business, maybe in that mode, 
But one thing that I'll never compromise is how we service our existing clientele because otherwise it's just a constant in and out. I feel where, right. you know, I'm because we don't do a good, you know, if, if that was the case, if we did do a good job in the service, it was just a one and done that we're writing all over, you know, the tri state area, but we never, you know, gave a flip about them after that. Then I'm having to write more to compensate for what I'm losing, you know? Yep. I want to write more, yes. But I don't want to be, you know, letting stuff out the back door where I can help it. You know, I, I can't help every aspect of my business. I can't help rates, but I can make sure that we're quoting people accurately. I, I can't help claims, but I can make sure that we advocate for our, our clients properly, and we do. But what I can control is how we treat people, how we're accessible, how we are there for people. And that is the one thing that we can control. And that is one thing that I try to make sure that we are doing to the best degree that we possibly can so that what I am writing growth wise is making a difference, I guess, and yep. not necessarily yep. an in and out, you know, a cyclical type of, you know, situation, you know, on there. And, and to this point, you know, that, that has served us well, once again, it's kudos to my, for our fantastic team, you know, that we have here that has that vision. And like I said, and I have tenured and seasoned all state LSBs. I mean, I have one lady that's been doing it for 30 years, another one, almost 30 years, 15, I've been doing it for 20, another one, almost 10, and, you know, and so another five. And so, I mean, there's a lot of, not necessarily with experience in insurance, but with all state experience too, which helps, helps a ton. Right. Hey, let, you, you just brought up something and I want to, I want to tiptoe on that before we, we wrap this up. Um, and that is, let's, let's say Michaela was wanting to become an insurance agent that works for you. Somebody that's going to go sell insurance. Yeah. Um, why would she want to do that? Why would she want to join your team? What makes you special in the Matt Moles agency? How, what would you say to somebody like Michaela? Yeah. So without going into too many specifics on numbers, I mean, I, I would say that it, it can be very lucrative. Um, you know, if you are somebody who is a self-starter, self-motivated, um, you know, and I, and I tell my people here as much as I can, you know, be where your feet are, which I know everybody said that a hundred times to other people, but, you know, while you're here, if you will just maximize the opportunity that we are getting here with all the marketing that we do, with all the lead generation stuff that we already have in our book, you know, we have about a, I think we're right at 15 million, um, size book. And so there's a lot of opportunity just within cross sales, within winbacks. If, if you are willing to put in the work to do it the right way, self-motivated, self-driven, my, our compensation plan here rewards hard work like that. And I mean, it is, it could be a, a very lucrative profession for you where not only are you treated like a professional, but you're looked as a professional and you're paid as a professional. Um, and something that, you know, I would hope that would be sustainable for you um, going in the future. You know, I'm not looking for people that come and go and I'm looking for people that come and, and, and grow. So. Hmm. Interesting. So, you know, so Michaela, I, I mean, if you want to get licensed in Texas, oh, are, you, let me know. are you offering? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I contemplated. There you go. <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> One thing I've, I've, I've often heard, Matt, and that is the insurance space is recession proof. That if we go into a recession, for the most part, insurance is going to be there because everybody has to have it. It doesn't matter if we're in a recession or not. So it's, it's stability. It, even though you're saying it's hard, the insurance world is hard. It, it's a tough space to be in. At the same, At the flip side of that, you're going to keep your job. When other people are out of a job, you're going to, it's a stability that will continue to be there. So I just yeah. encourage people today to, to consider becoming an insurance agent, go yeah. talk to Matt Moles, uh, call your local Allstate agent, your state farm agent, and have a conversation. We need insurance agents today more so than we did yesterday. Yeah. You know, so, and that, and yeah, and I'm a huge advocate for, for local agents too, whether it be state farm farmers you know, Germania, Allstate, because you're right, because I would say the industry as a whole might be, and the industry might be trying to squeeze 
us out thinking that they can do it better with a call center or online or self-service. But I mean, there are certain things that, you know, I mean, I know that when I go to the grocery store and I self-service checkout, it's a disaster. I, it takes forever. Um, I hate yep. it. I don't back stuff properly. I am much better suited with somebody doing it who is a professional that, <laughs> that you know, that does that. It's a lot more right. efficient. So, you know, why would you trust your, your, you know, some of your, your, you know, your, your family and your net worth and your assets and your, you know, to a self-service type of deal or to somebody who doesn't know you or that you'll never talk to again, where you are simply just a, you know, a few strokes on the keyboard, a few punches of the mouse and and it's a done. And they are basically never, you know, they're not looking at your needs on, on a needs basis. It's just, kind of what fits, what's the cheapest, and then you're done, you know, and that, you know, could absolutely lead to financial ruin for anybody. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm a huge advocate of, I hope it's all state. I hope it's Matt Mull's all state, but huge advocate for local agents um, doing their job, you know, to be professionals because, you know, in this world of, D, you know, DIY, do it yourself type of stuff or DIY. I mean, you can do a lot of things yourself, but I mean, certain things, you know, you, you probably shouldn't. You know, and I, I think that insurance is one of those deals. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. So I, I encourage anybody that's watching to consider it, consider it a profession. Um, it, it is, it is something that you're going to get into. And, and once you make it past the first couple of years, it's going to get in your blood and you're never going to leave. It, it's just, it, it becomes a passion. It becomes what you do. And I love the aspect of actually going out and helping people um, insure and insurance is a protection. It's like a big security blanket. And I look at it as a positive. You can look at it as a negative as well, because if you're just looking at money and the money that you're, it's costing you, you know, it, it can be a real demotivator. <clears throat> but if you think about it, cause when you, when your house burns down, when you're in a car accident, when somebody hits you and you need something to help you, it's there. And that's what insurance is for. It, it is a protective status class. And so I look at it as we're helping people. And those, those are fun things. That's why we got into this in the first place. Most people hate insurance agents, but the truth is right. we're there to serve and to protect. Oh, you can't tell me you haven't seen that, Matt. <laughs> I, that's, that's, I guess that's news to me. I didn't know that they hated us, but no, I'm just kidding. No, it's hard. No, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a thankless profession, which I get it. You know, I mean, yep. it's one of those deals where you're only needed when you're needed. You know, and, yep. you know, I, you know, I hate my premiums too. I feel like I pay way too much for, for insurance and it's only gone up, you know, I mean, yep. it went down on you know, 2020 for a brief period and then here comes <laughs> the inflation and it's, and it's gone back up and, you know, and so, and, and I, I feel the same burden that everybody feels, you know, in every aspect of insurance we have that my family has, it, it's gone up. And so I absolutely get yep. it. And I don't minimize that, you know, but it's one of those deals where it's like, it's only needed when you need it. And, yep. you know, like I said, I can't control everything, but I know that and we don't always get it perfect either. I mean, we, we have, we have dropped the ball on certain things. Um, but I can tell you that we will always, as far as my agency goes, we'll always advocate for our clients no matter what. And I just know that that's much better suited like that than it would be just calling some 1-800 number, not knowing who you're going to get, you know, because we basically are, are a conduit for that. And like I tell people all the time too, it's like, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I bleed blue. I know that Allstate is a fantastic company. I know that Allstate is a, is a from a moral standpoint, does the, the right thing. They don't always get it right either. But I work for you, who is my, my client. You know, I will do, I mean, they are the ones who pay the premiums, who then provide for my staff, provide for my family as well. And so I, I work for them. And so I will do whatever it takes to advocate, to, you know, go to the, you know, the ends of the, of the earth for them to make sure that they are at least satisfied. It may not be the right answer that they're looking for, right? I should say, it may not be the answer they're looking for, but it's going to be the right answer. And I'll be able to, to explain it as to why that ended up, the, you know, the, the way it is, you know, and not just going to be like, well, I mean, sorry, you know, type of deal. Right where it comes from a, a coverage, you know, standpoint. And so, I mean, once again, that's just a advocating for the, the local agency force, you know, to where we are the front lines of it. I mean, to yeah. my clients, I am all state. Um, right. And it is frustrating sometimes when it's like, Hey, when I have to rely on a lot of other people who are all state too, to, 
get their ducks in a row or do what we're asking properly or to satisfy the, the customer. But either way, I'm the face of it. You know, I'm the front line of it and I'm the yeah. end of it too. And so if, if people aren't satisfied in the end result, then they will find somebody else, you know? And so I have to make sure that my agency is equipped and aligned from the beginning, you know, all the way throughout until the end. So. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been good. Do you have any parting words for anybody watching us? Michaela, you got anything for us before we shut this down? Um, not particularly. I'm sorry that I came in a bit late. I was excited about this call. But Matt, before we hop off on the Zoom, um, we're not we're gonna stop recording, but I have questions about your account and then we'll talk about that job. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Rusty at B2B Breakroom and Old School Marketing. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Michaela, for spending. You're welcome. Why don't you show my pretty face? Jazz hands. <laughs> I can we will look forward to seeing everybody and talking to you next week. Have a great day. See you guys. Thank you. Bye.